So have a look at that, guys. Driving a 2002 Chevrolet Impala with the big 3.8 in it. It keeps throwing a code for the Bank 2 knock sensor. PO332, I believe it is. And right now, uh, we're cruising down the road in the lovely weather. I have some wires running outside hooked to the knock sensor signal under the hood. And I don't know about you, but that don't look like knock sensor to me. Let's give her some beans here. Whoa! What do you think that is? It looks like a very repeatable event, very repetitious. And it looks like that of a waste spark system. I believe that's going to be the firing lines on our ignition wires. Now you'll understand this a whole lot more when we pop the hood on this thing. It has been, I don't know how to say it, nicely touched, we'll say. I popped the hood, I almost just backed it right straight outside because the thing is a nightmare. What do you think about them apples right there? Let's go back to the shop and see if we can correct this condition fairly easily. Ta-da! This is not my mess, folks. This is what it looked like when I popped the hood. Not your uh, typical vehicle I work on. Evidently, they've been trying something I don't ask anymore. But, you can see, this is an knock sensor bank too. This is the one I'm probed into. And that comes all the way around. And I think this wire has probably been like this for a while just because of the discolor discolorization. It's supposed to be a blue wire. It looks kind of green. That comes around, loops around, and is conveniently, let me get a flashlight. They got it shoved right down into secondary ignition wires. I believe this problem was created. So you can see where the harness runs down there with all three of those. So the black poly loom there, those are spark plug wires. You can see our blue wire, looks like there's a black wire, are shoved right behind that secondary ignition wire holder. Let's move these wires out of the way, see if our signal straightens up, and uh, kind of take it from there. I'm not going to get too deep in this one. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. So it was right inside that bracket. It looks like the wire end's been repaired. If I look way down at the bottom, I see a buck connector of some sort. I see the clip over here on the side of the engine lift bracket where these wires are supposed to be, you know, factory wires. I'm sure they're leaking like crazy. Everything is touching them. Every connector, every harness holder, every single piece is busted. That's handy. There's already wire tie back here. I'm wondering. I'll just use this one. So just get the wires kind of half where they belong. I mean, there's no poly loom on it. This is going to turn into a train wreck here pretty quick. Just going to move them over as far away from these ignition wires as we can. I believe the factory harness ran down through here, and like I say, on the back side of this bracket. But any of these wires can act like an antenna course you know routed in properly and it's just gonna start picking that up and we're gonna sit tight right here I just don't want these wires to go anywhere I just want to keep them out of our way just long enough to take a test drive get this code to, uh, to run and clear it has another code in it for a cooling fan control circuit evidently a customer wants that looked at too all right, they don't appear to be the motor mounts in this car are shot, so I gotta. I just want to make sure there's enough play in it. You put this car in gear, and the engine just about jumps out of it. Got enough wire there. Snap on comes with a little tiny leads. All right, let's just see. Wow, get it set up here. Let's take it. Well, that looks a little better. Uh, let's see, normally I'd use a Pico, but I got it hooked up to that other car over there. Um, trigger on back. I 
Get a little bit of noise there, but I'm sure this is going to be well within the acceptable limits. <laughs> All right. Now, we'll clear the codes. Of course, it's got a lot of other lights on. We'll take, go back here. We're going to clear the codes out of it. Um, what we need to do... I know, I hear you. Let's see. I believe that was... Yeah, so PO332 and this PO480. We'll look at the 480 in a minute. The 332 is the one that I wanted to... That's the one that was originally scheduled for appointment-wise. So let's just go here like this. Okay, the test is not run, not passed. None of that. Alright, good. Coach cleared. Get rid of this. Back out of here. Probably gonna have our Yeah, so we got our cooling fan control circuit code. Uh, naturally. Let's back out of here. Uh, let's see, I guess we could get uh, bring up some data. But we'll take a look at our scope here real quick. Alright. I'd say it's time to take a shake. Back to the winter wonderland. I actually gotta take a ride down to the junkyard. Exchange a mass airflow sensor. Let's see here. I don't know if we're gonna get any knock signal. We'll get out here and give her some beans. Ah, there we go. Whoa, keep it on the road, buddy! All right, so the knock sensor seems to be reporting. Let's see if I can drive with my knee, hold the camera. Oh, he thought the texting was bad. Go back to our scope here. That is much cleaner. Let's see if we can get a knock event. Much, much better. This is what I'm expecting to see. So the uh, ECM is going to look for a certain frequency. The code setting criteria on this is a, a tad hard to understand. I'll put the uh, code setting description in the comment box down below. There'll be a link. Uh, shoot, I can't put that in there. I put the Pico files in there, but we're using the uh, virus, so I'm not going to do that. down to the salvage yard here see if the uh, criteria has been met to generate this code I believe it said it was between 1 and 2,000 rpms above 10% throttle uh, fully warmed up engine and uh, I think 40% engine load something like that so essentially just cruising torque converter lock up and then start tipping into that throttle a little bit because that's you know that's where you're usually gonna get spark knock try to create the condition right now. I'm slowly tipping into it. And like I say, the ECM can decipher, you know, the frequency that's coming across there and determine, you know, what frequency a spark knock is versus just, you know, noise that the uh, knock sensor picks up. So there we are, torque converter's locked up. Between one and two thousand. Signal's nice and clean. Now I gotta pay attention so we all don't die. I just pulled over here at my brother's shop. I forgot I can't go to the salvage yard because they didn't plow the driveway and this thing's got baloney skins on it. I don't feel like walking. Let's see here. No code, that's good, because he said the code would come back immediately. Did not fail this ignition. So we're gonna go here, see if it ran. Zero, three, three, two. Passed, passed, and passed. That's it, baby. I think this problem was implanted into this vehicle. Well, that's one of them.
hopefully everything's good except the road and other people driving. You gotta watch out. It might not be you being a bad driver, but you gotta watch out for the other guys. So we're just gonna go back through. I just wanna make sure it didn't uh, throw any pending codes or anything silly. All right, let's see. And we can see I took, tried to take a little video clip there when you're you know really lugging it with the torque converter locked up. You're gonna get a little you know a little spark knock. It's gonna pick it up and it's gonna adjust the timing. So hopefully that was represented well. But like I said, it's hard with you know trying to watch traffic and all that stuff. So we'll go back in here, make sure that test runs 332. Of course, I've shut the key off and turned it back on so it does not run this time, but. Historically, it has been passing, according to this. So that's good. Now we have to address whatever one it was, this P0480. Now that is fan, coolant fan one control circuit. It says have dual fans. So what we're going to do, uh, now if it's the control side, this is going to be controlling, or it should be sensing the low amperage side of the of the um, of the relay, of, yeah, of the relay. That's what I was looking for. So the relay should have, you know, power to it, and then the ECM's, you know, going to be a ground side control. It's going to kick that little guy on. I'm assuming it doesn't see the power coming, you know, through the relay back to the ECM, perhaps. Uh, so I say what we do here. We're going to go into function test, output controls. We're going to see if we have any fans. Fan one relay. There we go. On off. Just gotta wait for the data to get popped up here. <clears throat> we'll turn it on. Off, on, off. I don't hear anything. You know, no big surprise there. So let's see, do they have another cooling fan? Injectors. Fan two. We're gonna have to get a diagram here at some point, but I just want to see what works and what doesn't. So this is fan relay number two. Oh, there it goes. Took a while. Let's see how many fans are running. That's the fan over on the driver's side. So we'll shut that off. I'll tell you what, we're going to go back to fan one because that was such a delay there. We're going to turn fan number one back on. Or we're going to wait a little bit because that, that took some time. That was quite a delay. I don't know if there's any data here, I really don't care, I guess. So I left it on. Next step, wire diagram. See who's fan one, who's fan two, who's on first. And uh, take it from there. I don't even know where the relay is. Could be blown fuse for all I know. Looking at this wire, could be anything. And here's our diagram. So this is the relay we're having a problem with, or I guess it's gonna be this control circuit because it's a control problem. Uh, looks like a dark green wire comes out of the ECM, goes to the cooling fan relay. It is independently fused from the other two relays. However, one observation to make is the power source that feeds the control side of the relay is also the power source for the load side of the relay. Uh, so that's also something good to note. I say we find the relay, find the fuse, uh, quick visual inspection and then take our diag from there. I guess before I do, I'll just make one observation. I think when we turned on cooling fan relay number two, I believe that turned on the fan on the driver's side. I don't see, I don't see how that's possible. It's not. I'm assuming if this diagram is correct, perhaps that's a typo. When we turn on this cooling fan control relay, so our power is going to come through the relay, it's going to go through the fan, it's going to go back up around, it's going to go through this relay, over and down to this fan, so that technically should make both fans run at half speed. Uh, it's going to drop half its uh, voltage on this one and the other half on that one, uh, so that's I guess why it would be a low speed fan, but it should be both of them. I'm interested though when we closed, I don't know, how did they have that labeled here in the, in the virus, let me just take a peek here. Don't mind me, out of frame, output controls. They just called it fan number two relay. I don't know if they had fan number three in here. I don't see it. No, so they had fan number two relay. 
So this is interesting. Let's have a look at this. So let's just have a quick look. So when we command it on fan number two, all right, where does it get its power from? That all comes from this single fuse here. ECM turns it on. It turns on fan number two and number three relay. That has no choice. They're jumper together. The contact closes. Comes down and goes to it's tied in with a ground okay and then it's that fan this relay also closes power yeah so it only turns on one fan just looking at that real quick here fan re number two closes so that's pretty peculiar that's how they run their low and high speed system I'm just curious if they, if perhaps these fan connectors down there are mismatched or this is just a typo. Uh, in either case, we're just going to keep motor in here. Needless to say, it is a short diag. I was just looking here at the wire colors. We got white and gray on the right, black and blue on the left. According to our diagram, gray and white should be on the left. So it appears the plugs are mismatched. They've got those switched around. Uh, so it is plugged in incorrectly, assuming our diagram is correct. I guess that's neither here nor there, because the problem is obvious. I can smell it. This fan is seized right up. It had something shoved in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's junk. We're not going to go any further. I'm sure the fuse is probably blown. We can look at it, but it's irrelevant at this point. Visual inspection would have been good at first before we printed out a diagram. At any rate, if you have any interest in it, I'll leave a copy of the diagram. It is kind of unique. Well, I shouldn't say it's unique. It's something you'll see in this uh, industry a lot where they'll run, instead of running some kind of resistor to run a low speed on a fan. You know, Honda did this a lot too, where They'll have the fans in series, so you'll run two fans at half the speed. And uh, just glancing at the diagram here, that is that is how it appears, uh, particularly with the uh, three relay system. I don't know what the purpose is running two of them at half speed or one on high speed. I'm not real sure. I've never really looked into it, uh, but interesting nonetheless. So I'll put a link in the description box where you can have a look at that diagram if you're interested in a look at that seeing excuse me the power flow through those and I guess what we learned here is don't do this whatever this is uh, obviously it, it has created the problem we've ran and passed that PO332 for the knock sensor I'll put the code setting criteria down there too like in a PDF file so you can look at that I'm happy with it. I'm moving on. We'll leave it at that, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Uh, the thing I learned is don't do that to your car, and certainly don't leave an open wire harness laying right on top of the secondary ignition wires. They turn into giant antennas. And if they leak good enough, and you send, oh, good 30, 40,000 volts back to the ECM, I'm sure it won't be happy. And it will let the angry pixies out of the box, as they say. In the meantime, I gotta get back on the Hyundai. So this is like doing a video in a video. Pretty weird, huh? You guys have already seen, or perhaps we'll see this in an upcoming video. Uh, so I've got to get back to the salvage yard. Get us another mass airflow sensor. It'll all make sense to you at some point. At any rate, down in the comment box below, leave your questions, comments, criticisms, concerns. Smash that thumbs up button if you like the video. Uh, look in the description box for these files, or whatever we may have down there. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.